Salutations. Today's briefing, America's lightning carrier, USS America. Today's briefing, how good is it as an aircraft carrier? Uh, at the end of this, please comment, like, subscribe and share. So the USS America and the USS Tripoli, the first two of the America class, Follow-on follow -on ships of this class will be different, and I'll talk about that later. They really have two roles. Firstly, or primarily, is as a vertical amphibious assault ship, you know, utilising rotary and tilt rotor aircraft to uh, assault the shore. The second role is as a lightning carrier, aircraft carriers carrying uh, F-35B uh, stealth fighters. Now, the America class of the first two, America and uh, Tripoli, look very much like previous LHAs, landing helicopter assault. Now, here was the first one, the USS Tarawa class LHA, uh, in service, the whole class, from 1976 to 2015. Uh, a couple of points to note here. Uh, look at the bow, it's a... Um, it's a tapered bow, the uh, flight deck. The flight deck's tapered at the, at the bow. And the uh, there is um, a stern uh, aircraft lift, rather not a deck edge, but right at the stern. So there's that is a point of reference, as is the tapered bow. The Tarawas were succeeded by the WASP class in service starting 1989 and, and still in service now. Um, you'll note that the bow has been squared off. It's just a, a big rectangle. Uh, that's to give additional parking space for aircraft on the flight deck. And the stern aircraft lift, lift has been moved to the starboard side as another deck edge. Um, lift. And here we have um, a good deck view of the USS America class. Uh, so America and Tripoli. And the subsequent ones, starting with Bougainville, will also look like this from the top, but they will have other differences which we'll cover later. So again, as with the WASP class, we have a, a squared off uh, bow for that additional flight deck space for um, aircraft. And the starboard side aft uh, deck edge lift for aircraft. So very much the same layout as um, the WASP. But the WASP and the Tarawas which preceded it um, had a floodable uh, well dock, you know, for amphibious, uh, so air, cushion, air cushion vehicles and landing craft. Um, and of this you'll see a good shot of um, the AVAB uh, Harriers operating off, uh, off the WASP. So Tarawa and the WASP have these floodable well decks for landing craft and air cushion vehicles. But the USS America and Tripoli, LHA still, don't have this floodable well dock, so no air cushion vehicles or landing craft being used on, on these two ships, which is interesting in itself. And that will change with subsequent vessels, but we'll get to that later. So the American Tripoli LHAs are actually more like the Iwo Jima class landing platform helicopters of the or 1970s and onwards uh, in concept. In concept, obviously they're a lot bigger. The Iwo Jima class are around 20,000 tons, and um, the America class are at uh, over 45,000 tons. And you can see from the Iwo Jima class, we have uh, no floodable well dock and two deck edge lifts, one port, one, uh, one starboard. 
and a good just flat flight deck um, to assist uh, helicopter operations. And, and one of the Iwo Jima class, the USS Guam, was trialled as a sea control ship. Um, and this was a concept to the US Navy to develop small aircraft carriers that could be used where you needed fixed wing assets but could not uh, use your standard carriage because they were on higher priority operations elsewhere. So as a, as a proxy for a, an aircraft carrier. And note all of these uh, ships have axial flight decks, you know, not angled flight decks. And I've talked about that in my Type 076 uh, brief. So today's brief is about the America, USS America and USS Tripoli as Stovall characters, short takeoff uh, vertical landing carriers. Um, and the reason this is important is these ships were designed to act as proxy aircraft carriers uh, when the US Navy, um, because of the, uh, the concerns the US Navy had that it may not have enough uh, aircraft carriers, traditional aircraft carriers, the CVNs that we all know the US Navy have, for operational requirements. So what could they have to help fill a gap you know, a, as a proxy aircraft carrier? So we're going to look at how the USS America and the Tripoli compare to other Stovall carriers. And the first one is the Italian Navy's Cavour Stovall carrier. So you'll see it has a ski jump, two lifts, one inboard, but possibly still clear of the runway so it may not impact flight operations and aft a, a starboard uh, deck edge lift. So that's not a bad layout. Secondly, we'll look at HMS Queen Elizabeth. Uh, now this is a Stovall character. Some people incorrectly refer to it as a Stobar character, but it quite clearly isn't. It has no arrestor wires. Um, again, we have oh, a, uh, a ski jump and two lifts, but here they are both deck edge lifts and very large lift. Each lifts, each lift can accommodate two F-35 Bravos. So um, uh, the largest lifts of any of the ships we're going to look at today, and and the ski jump as I as I mentioned. Thirdly, we'll look at um, the Japanese ship Izumo, and there's two in the class. There's the Izumo and the Kaga. A Stovall character. Now the Japanese call this a destroyer, but quite clearly this is an aircraft carrier. Um, it doesn't have a ski jump, and I'll talk about the reason of why that might have been the case in a minute. You'll notice two lifts similar to uh, the Cavour, one deck edge, starboard aft, and then a um, an inboard forward uh, lift, which this one looks further across, so it may indeed impact flight operations from the F-35Bs, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and, and this ship is to be modified. It already has undergone some modification to the deck so it can handle the heat of the F-35's engine, but the bow is also going to be modified or planned to be modified, uh, allegedly. And as with the Tarawa, which was tapered, this will uh, apparently be squared off to look more like the WASP and the uh, America's uh, bow. Now, I, I talked about um, it didn't have a ski jump. Um, I think that was intentional beginning to hide the fact that even though uh, th that the Japanese actually planned for this very early on to be able to be converted into an aircraft carrier. And th the Japanese did this in the 1930s with the... Um, the shadow carrier program where they had built uh, some seaplane carriers and some uh, cruise liners which were designed from the start to be easily convertible into aircraft carriers and I think the Japanese certainly had that uh, idea in mind 
when they built the Zumo and the Kaga to be able to quickly modify into uh, Stovall, Stovall car carriers. And then we have the USS America, and the Tripoli is the same as this, as a Stovall carrier. This is in lightning carrier mode, not in the um, vertical assault amphibious ship role. Um, and as with the Wasp, a squared off uh, bow to give that extra flight deck space, which is very useful. Um, two deck edge lifts, although um, given that this is designed, and you can see the F-35 there, to operate um, as an aircraft carrier or a proxy aircraft carrier, this port side lift could interfere with flight operations. Uh, so we talked about why we had the Cavour, which has a ski jump, the Queen Elizabeth, which has a, a ski jump, the Azumo doesn't, and I've explained the reasons why. We didn't, uh, the Japanese did not want to look it to appear as though it could be an aircraft carrier, even though it was designed for that. And then we have the America, which is designed um, to operate uh, F-35s and fixed-wing aircraft. Why wouldn't it have a ski jump? Well, I talked about the two roles. Of, uh, of the ship, and one is vertical amphibious assault, so with rotary and tilt rotor assets. For that, you want the maximum amount of depth deck space to operate your, your aircraft. Having a ramp, a ski jump, sorry, takes away some of that available um, real estate, if you like. So for the US, um, not having the ski jump, which there are negatives to that, we'll talk about that in a moment, um, gave more space for rotary ring operations, which was, is the primary role even for the American, the Tripoli, that are designed to have uh, uh, greater capability to operate F-35s than the sister ships will and the previous WASP class. Now, one of the benefits for the American, the Tripoli, with not having the, the floatable well dock, is they use that space um, to provide greater logistic support for the F-35, for the F-35 op operations. So there's more fuel, more ammunition, more spares, and a, a larger maintenance area than would be the case, and that will be the case on the subsequent ships, starting with the USS Bougainville and the remainder of the America class. And then for the air wings for all of these, these ships, um, air wings very important. Um, they're all planned to operate the F-35Bs. For the America, it will operate the SH-60 any submarine warfare helos. Um, but no airborne early warning, as many aircraft carriers have. So let's look at a comparison of the, the four ships. The America, uh, we have the name, the length, the beam is of the hull. Now, there's some variations, of course, in all of these, but it's not the flight deck. Important note, this is not the maximum beam or, or the flight deck. It's the maximum beam of the hull. Displacement, the aircraft... Aircraft numbers will always vary. Um, Fixed-wing aircraft traditionally take more space than a helicopter, so it's not a one-for-one -one substitution. If you take away one plane, one fixed-wing aircraft, you get only one helicopter. Over a number, you'll get more. Uh, so that that figure is variable. The AEW airborne early warning. Now, technically, all of these ships could operate airborne early warning helicopters, but at this stage, only one nation is going to operate those uh, of these, of the nations that operate these Stovall carriers. Uh, a ski jump is potentially important for range payload considerations for the F-35B, and then, of course, the speed. So for the America, most of those figures there are clear cut. The aircraft, this is one of many figures that says it could operate 20 F-35Bs and six helicopters. That's one figure. Um, the US is not operating a rotary wing AEW aircraft at the moment, so it's no AEW, no ski jump, 
and 20 plus knots for the speed. For the Izumo, uh, 28 helicopters, obviously that greatly reduces if you're using um, F-35s off the, off the carrier. I've seen a figure saying that it might operate 10 F-35s plus helicopters, so less than the America. Uh, no airborne early warning, no ski jump, but a very high speed, what you'd expect from an aircraft carrier. The Cavour um, does have a ski jump, so that will likely assist or, a, or improve the F-35 Bravo's range payload performance. A good speed at 28 knots. Um, and one example, one notional air wing is eight F-35 Bravos and 12 helicopters. And then we have what is so far the, uh, the, uh, the ultimate expression of a, a Stovall carrier in the Queen Elizabeth class. Um, obviously it is an order of magnitude larger than the other ships, but it is still a Stovall carrier as the others are. Um, it does have, it's the one that does have an airborne early warning uh, asset based on its um, Augusta 101 um, crow's nest, sorry, crow's nest helicopter. Uh, does have a hel uh, ski jump as um, identified in the earlier uh, photo. And normal air wing would be 24 F-35s plus helicopters, but it in some in some scenarios could take up to 36 F-35s. But it is a much larger ship than the others, to be fair. And, and as I noted earlier, for this is a, a comparison of Stovall carriers, but for ships without floodable well docks, okay? So they have no, none of these ships have the ability to uh, employ air cushion vehicles or, or landing craft from the ships themselves. So, in summary, the USS America and the Tripoli, of course, for this, as a Stovall aircraft carrier and a proxy for a standard aircraft carrier, so for the US, it's their CVNs, their nuclear-powered carriers. And as I've mentioned in other briefings, there's three elements to look at the capability of an aircraft carrier. Firstly, it's the vessel itself. Well, the America um, has a slow speed for a carrier, the position of its portside lift can impact flight operations, and it has no ski jump. Second element is the air wing of the carrier. Well, the America class uh, are equipped with a very capable um, fighter strike aircraft in the F-35B, um, and they have uh, quite good anti-submarine warfare helos in the SH-60 uh, Seahawks, but they lack an airborne early warning uh, aircraft. And as I mentioned, no ski jump likely reduces the F-35 Bravo's range payload performance. The third aspect of the carrier is the supporting ships. Uh, so the US has excellent supporting ships for a carrier strike group. Um, it's in the air warfare with the Tycon Drogas are being phased out, but the Ali Burke uh, Aegeus destroyers um, the anti-submarine warfare capability of the supporting ships is very good and excellent replenishment vessels. So the supporting ships to this carrier battle group that you could build around the USS America or Tripoli is, is very good. So as I said, in summary, we look at all this. As an aircraft carrier, the US Lightning Carrier concept has a number of limitations, a number of limitations where the US would need to be very mindful of employing them in that role as proxy aircraft carriers, where they don't have enough of their traditional carriers, the CVN, Nimitz and Ford class, to tackle the operational requirement. As an amphibious assault ship, which is employing vertical assault through the rotor wing and tilt wing assets, they are very good ships but that's a separate issue. Uh, that concludes today's briefing. In a subsequent briefing, I will look at what INS Indi Indian naval ship Vikramaditya, Vikramaditya uh, might have looked like in another time and place. 
Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, happy to take suggestions for future briefings for subscribers and to uh, reply to appropriate comments. Until next time, Fale de Serre.